Hi, welcome to the Court Maths Video Solutions to the Parts of the Circles Practice Questions. In this video, we're going to go through the solutions to the practice questions. If you want to watch the video tutorial on Parts of the Circle, if you go to courtmaths.com and go to video 61, you can watch the video tutorial on it. Okay, let's get started. So, question one. So, question one asks us to match each diagram to its label. So, we've got the diagrams on the left and the labels on the right. So, our first circle, well, we've got a line going from the centre of the circle to the edge of the circle, or a point on the circle. So, that is the radius. So, let's look at our labels. So, the radius is at the bottom. So, we'll label that one up, like so. Now, our second circle. So, our second circle, the whole circle is in red. So, around the outside of the circle is in red. So, that's the circumference. And finally, our diagram at the bottom it has got the diameter labeled going through the center of the circle and it's going from one side of the circle to the other so that is the diameter and that's it so that's question one okay let's have a look at question two okay in question two we've been given a circle and the center of a circle we've been asked to draw a radius on the circle so remember a radius is a line going from the center of the circle to a point on the circle so let's draw that radius so we could draw it in any direction we could go up here or across here or over there any way you want so i'm just going to do it like so okay so that is a radius on the circle okay next question three now question three so in question three we've been told here's six diagrams so six diagrams on the right hand side and six labels on the left in each diagram the center of the circle is shown as a dot so here we've got the center of the circle and we've been asked to match each diagram to its label and the first one's been done for us so if we have a look at the first label the first label says a circle and a radius so the radius is the line going from the center of the circle to a point on the circle like so so that's the radius so our second one so our second label says a circle and a segment well this diagram diagram shows a circle and a segment, so we've got a chord, we've got an arc, and we've got the region between them coloured in, in red, so that region in red is a segment, so let's label it. Next, we've got a circle and an arc, so an arc is part of the circumference, so it's part of the circle, so if we have a look, down the bottom we've got our arc in red here, so that's a circle and an arc, so let's label that one. We're going next one. So our next one is a circle and the diameter. So the diameter is a line going from one side of a circle to another side of a circle, passing through the center. So let's have a look for that diameter. So that's not the diameter because it doesn't pass through the center. That's not a diameter because it's already been labeled as the radius because it's only halfway across. And if we go up to the top, you can see that is a circle and the diameter. So the circle and diameter is a diagram at the top. Okay, and next we have got a circle and a tangent. So a tangent is a straight line that touches a circle and carries on. So that's going to be the circle and the tangent there. And finally, a circle and a chord. Well, a chord is a line that goes from one side of a circle to another. Uh, so that's going to be our chord there. Okay, so that's a circle and a chord. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at question 4a. So question 4a says to draw a circle of radius 5 centimetres. So in this question, you're going to need your ruler and you're going to need a compass and a pencil. And you're going to put your pencil in your compass and you're going to um, set it so that your compass is 5 centimetres. That means the distance between the point of the compass and the point of the pencil is exactly 5 centimetres. Next, put the point of the compass down on the page. And then what you're going to do is you're going to set your pencil down. So it's say, and it's going to be 5 centimetres away because you've measured it. And you're going to draw a circle. And it should look something like this. So we've drawn our circle and it's got a radius of 5 centimetres, so that's the distance from the centre of the circle to a point on the circle, and that's 5 centimetres, and that's it. So that's our circle with radius of 5 centimetres. Okay, next. Okay, so part B. So part B says write down the length of the diameter of the circle. So the diameter is twice the radius, it's the whole way across the circle. So if we go up here, we've got our radius of 5, we'd have a radius of 5 on the other side, so that means the diameter going the whole way across the circle through the centre would be 10 centimetres. So our diameter would be 10 centimetres. Okay, part C says draw a chord on the circle. So we're going to now draw a chord on the circle. So let's get our ruler and pencil. And we're going to draw a line joining one point on the circle to another point on the circle. So it could be like that, it could be like that, it could be like that, it could be any chord at all. So there's a chord going from one point on the circle to another point in the circle. That's the line joining it. That's the chord. Let's label it. Chord. Okay, in part D, we've been asked to draw a tangent to the circle. So remember, tangent is a line that touches a circle once and carries on. So let's get our ruler and pencil and draw a tangent, and our tangent would look something like that. And you can draw any tangent, you could draw a tangent at the bottom, at the side, and the tangent is just a straight line that touches the circle once and carries on. And as you can see, the tangent just touches the circle there once and carries on. So that is our tangent. Okay, question five. So question five, we've been told the points A, B, C and D are four points on a circle with centre O. 
And so there's our diagram. We've been given six words and they are arc, diameter, chord, tangent, circumference and radius. So let's have a look at our questions. So question A says, the straight line AC is a blank of the circle. So if we go up here and look at the line AC, AC is the line that goes from one side of the circle to another side of the circle. So it's the line joining the points A and C, and it passes through the center. So AC would be a diameter. So AC is a diameter. Next is straight line OD is the what of the circle. So let's have a look, and look at the line OD. So the line joining O and D, well that's this line going from the center of the circle to a point on the circle. So that is our radius. So B is the radius. Part C says the straight line BC. So let's have a look at the line BC. So the line BC is showing one point on the circle to another point on the circle. It's not passing through the center, and that's, so that's going to be a chord. So let's label it chord. And finally, part D says draw a sector on the circle below. So we've got a circle, we've got the point in the middle, and we want to draw a sector. I like to think of a sector being a pizza slice, so let's put our sector in. So we've got one radius. We've got another radius or two radii and the sector would be the region in between those two radii and the arc so this region it could also be this region it depends which sector you're drawing you could draw the minor sector or the major sector i'm going to just color in this one here and that's it so that is a sector of a circle Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So question six. So in question six, we've been given some circles and we've been asked to draw some things on their diagrams. So our first circle, we've got the circle and the center of the circle, and we've been asked to draw a diameter. So the diameter is a line joining one point on the circle to another point on the circle passing through the center of the circle. So I'm gonna draw that diameter. Obviously I could draw the one going straight across or straight up and down, but I'm gonna draw that one, so that's the diameter. So part B, we've been asked to draw an arc on the circle. So remember an arc is part of the circumference. So I'm just going to draw quite a small arc here. So I could draw this arc here. So it's part of the circumference. I'm trying to uh, color in part of that circumference like so. So it's part of the circle. I could do the major arc, but that's just a minor arc there. Okay, next. Okay, part C, we've been asked to draw and shade in a segment of a circle. So remember, a segment of a circle is the region between a chord and the arc. So if we draw a chord, so let's draw this chord going from one point of the circle to another and we've got this arc here where the segment is the region in between those so you could do the region on the other side between this chord and this arc if you wanted um, but I'm just going to do this segment here okay let's have a look at our next question so we've been given some words connected to circles. We've got the tangent, the radius, the diameter, the chord, the center, and the circumference. And we've been asked to label the four boxes in the diagram. So let's have a look at our diagram. Okay, so this line, it's a line that touches the circle once and carries on. So that line is the tangent, so tangent. This line joining the center of the circle to the circle is the radius. This label points to the circle itself. Now, let's have a look and see if we've got an arc, because this could be the circumference or could be an arc, depending if it's shaded in. We've got no arc in our list, so it's going to have to be the circumference. So this this is our circumference. If there was just a part colored in or shaded in, which you know, if this was in black and white, I couldn't say it could possibly be an arc, but we've only got the option for circumference anyway, so that's great, circumference. Okay, and finally, we've got a line that joins one part of the circle to another, and that is going to be our chord. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, so question eight. So we've got another diagram here, and we've got this line, a chord. We've got this line, the diameter, or the radius, and another radius, and another radius. And we've got the point T here, and O being the center of the circle. And our first question says, mark on the diagram with arrows a pair of parallel lines. So as you can see here, the chord and the diameter look like they're parallel lines. They're going in the same direction. So let's label those as being parallel. So let's use our arrows going that way and that way. It could be the radius and the chord. It could be this radius and the chord. Or it could be the diameter and the chord. Um, so they are parallel lines. Okay, next. Okay, part B says shade on the diagram a segment of the circle. So remember that a segment is the region bound between a chord and an arc. So let's shade in this segment here. Okay. <laughs> Okay, next. Okay, and part C says draw a tangent to the circle at the point T. So we've got the point T here. A tangent will be a straight line that touches the circle once at T and carries on. So it's going to look something like this. So let's get a ruler and pencil and draw that tangent. So it could look something like that. So that's a straight line that touches the circle once at the point T. And that's our tangent. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. 
Okay, let's have a look at question nine. So question nine says a coin has a radius of 16 millimeters. So that means the distance from the center of the coin to the edge of the coin or to a point on the, the circumference is 16 millimeters. And we've been asked to find the diameter of the coin, so that's the whole way across. So if halfway across is equal to 16 millimeters, we just need to multiply that by two to get the whole distance across the coin, the diameter. So 16 multiplied by two would be 32. So the diameter of the coin would be 32 millimeters. Okay, next, question 10. So question 10 says a hula hoop has a diameter of 106 centimetres. So if we've got a circle, the distance across the whole circle going through the centre is 106 centimetres. And we've been asked to find the radius of the hula hoop, so that's halfway across. So we just need to divide the diameter by 2. So we just need to do 106 divided by 2. So 100 divided by 2 is 50, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so the answer would be 53 centimetres. Okay, question 11. So question 11 says, Sven measures the radius, circumference, diameter, and chord of a circle. So we've been asked to circle the largest of radius, circumference, diameter, and chord. So the radius is the distance joining the center of the circle to a point on the circle. The diameter is the distance from one side of the circle to the other side of the circle, passing through the center. The chord is the distance from one point of a circle to another point on the circle. And the circumference, well, that's quite a large distance going around the whole way around the circle. And actually, it's found by multiplying the diameter by pi, which is 3.14159 and so on. The circumference will be the largest. And if you look at your diagrams, if we look at the diagrams up here, you'll see that the circumference is the largest here. Whenever we have our circle, we've got our radius, our diameter, our circumference, which is going to be larger than those two, and a chord. So the circumference will be the largest. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, question 12. Which of the following is a straight line? Circle your answer. So we've got an arc, which is part of the circumference. That's curved. We've got the circumference. Well, that's curved. We've got a segment. Well, that's going to be the region in between a straight line and an arc. So it's not a straight line. And we have got our tangent. That's a straight line that touches the circle once and carries on. So a tangent is a straight line. Okay, let's have a look at question 13. So we've got a set of axes, our x-axis and our y-axis, and we've got the points A, which is the point negative 3, negative 3, and the point B, which is the point 3, 1. And we've been asked, first of all, to write down the coordinates of the point B. So if we have a look at the point B, that is 3 along and 1 up, so that would be the coordinates 3, 1. So remember to put our brackets down, 3, and then 1, and we've got our brackets and our common between them, so 3, 1. Okay, next we've been told that AB is the diameter of the circle C. And we've been asked to draw circle C. So let's have a look at our set of axes, and we've got the points A and B. So that's the diameter, so that's the diameter of a circle. Let's actually join them up, because it's the diameter, we can may as well join them up. So we now need to draw a circle, so that's the diameter. So if I want to do that, first of all, I need to figure out where to put my compass. So I'm going to put the compass in the midpoint of that line. Remember, the center of the circle is in the middle of the diameter. And as you can see here, this is the midpoint of the line. So the coordinate 0, negative 1 is going to be the midpoint of the line AB. It's in the middle. We go 1, 2, 3 across, and 1, 2 up. And we go another 1, 2, 3 across, and 1, 2 up. So that's the midpoint of our line AB. So it's going to be the center of our circle. So we just need to put our point of our compass here, put the pencil in the compass, and set it so that the pencil is here on B, and then just draw your circle. You could also put the point of the circle on the center, and you could put the pencil on A, and you could draw the circle as well, and it would be the same circle. And it should look something like this. So that's our circle. We've got AB being the diameter. We've got this center of the circle at the point 0 minus 1, and that is the circle. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. So here we've got question 14, and it says some small circles, so we've got some small circles on the top, one, two, three, four, five, six of them, and some large circles, and they're beneath, and there's one, two, three, four, five of them, and they fit exactly in a rectangle. So as you can see, we've got our rectangle here. And we've been asked to work out the radius of the small circle. So we want to find the distance from the center of the small circle to the edge of the small circle. So we're trying to find this distance x here. So first of all, if we have a look at our large circle at the bottom, there's one, two, three, four, five of them. And the diameter of each of them is 7.8. So if we multiply, and this is a calculator question, that's great. If we multiply 7.8 by 5, we will get the distance that goes the whole way across. So we will get the distance going the whole way across the rectangle. In other words, we'll find the length of this rectangle. So let's do that. So let's take our 7.8, because we've got one, two, three, four, five circles, and we'd have five diameters, and that would tell us the length of the rectangle. So let's take our 7.8 and multiply that by five. 
And when we do that, we get 39 centimeters. So this rectangle is 39 centimeters long. And we've been asked to find the radius of the small circle. So we've been asked to find this distance, the radius of the small circle. Now, if we look at all the circles, there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So that means that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six diameters going the whole way across. So if we divide 39 by six, we will find the diameter of one of the small circles. So if we divide 39 by six, we'll find the, the diameter of one of these circles. So 39 divided by six is equal to 6.5. So that means that this circle has got a diameter of 6.5. This circle has got a diameter of 6.5 centimeters. This circle has got a diameter of 6.5 centimeters and so on. Now in the question, we were asked to find the radius of the small circle. So that's halfway across one of the small circles. So if we divide 6.5, the diameter, by 2, we will find the length of the radius. So let's do 6.5 divided by 2. And whenever we do 6.5 divided by 2, we get that's equal to 3.25 centimeters. So that means the radius of each one of these small circles is 3.25. And another way we could have done it was, if we looked at our large circles, there was five of them, so we do 5.7.8 to get 39 centimeters, the whole way across the rectangle, so the length of the rectangle. And then if we look at our radii, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 radii. So we're going from the edge to the center, from the center to the edge, and so on, going across. So if we done 39 divided by 12, so 39 divided by 12, that would also be 3.25. Okay, so our answer is 3.25 centimeters. And that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the parts of the circle practice questions. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful saying that. Um, but so I hope you find these video solutions useful. If you do like the video, please like it. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, good luck.